Hello, humans of the world. You are now tuned into Relations Podcast, where me and a new co-host just like you discuss our relations with ourselves, with each other, and our experiences. Are we ready to break the cycles? You know, the ones that live within our learned behaviors. Have you noticed the decisions you make subconsciously? The ones that lead you right back to where you started? Let's take on the healing journey together. Get on this PJ of unconventional conversations and let's travel all the way through our lineage then let's break the cycles link by link ready let's do this hello 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 welcome to relations hello humans of the world We're here again for another amazing episode. I want to thank everyone for listening, for tuning in, for commenting, liking, all of it, all the support. I really, really appreciate it. Um, And so we're here again for another amazing episode with a great co-host. You know, my co-hosts are the best part. And we're here with my friend, Marcus. Say hi to the people. How is everybody doing today? (laughs) <laughs> um, so Marcus and I, we always start with how we met. So Marcus and I uh, met in college back in 2000, gosh, what year, Marcus? Three, 2003. Oh, gosh, we're old. Okay, so we met <laughs> in 2003, um, and he was upperclassman than me. I came in as a freshman, and you were junior? I was a senior. I was a senior. You were a senior. Um, and so we never really, like, talked directly up until one specific day when we had to interact and meet. Mm-hmm. So go ahead, tell the people how did we meet? <laughs> well, it was at a, I think it was a club. It was at a club party club, and um, at that time I wasn't drinking at all. Mm-hmm. So I know that. I, yeah, I see things kind of, you know, you kind of see things differently when you're sober and everything. So mm-hmm. I kind of got dragged out. Seemed to listen in some some trouble, to say the least. <laughs> um, was about to get, was yeah, about to get jumped. We could be, yeah, we could be transparent about. Okay, it. all right. She's about to get jumped. And, you know, I'm just, I wasn't going to have that. I mean, I don't know if people know St. Bonaventure is predominantly white. There's only like a handful of us there. Mm-hmm. And just wasn't going to let that happen. I didn't really know her like that. But, you know, I look at that as a sister or a friend or whatever like that. So I just intervened. Yeah. And it was, what was interesting about it. I remember, I remember our conversation when you intervened because I had just gotten, um, the job or the role to be an RA for the following year. And you were an RA already. No, I wasn't an RA. My girlfriend at the time was an RA. So your girlfriend was an RA. And I remember the both of you approached me. You're like, you know, you just got this job. This is like money and your reputation, everything on the line right now. Like, you can't do this. And I'm just like, well, I have to defend myself. Like, I'm not going to yeah. just let these four girls yeah. dump me. And, and mm-hmm. you were just like, no, we're not having it. And I remember you grabbed me and, like, just put your arms around my neck. And you were like, we're about to walk outside. Nobody's going to touch you. You're going to get in my car, and I'm going to take you back to Camden. And I was like, okay. And we walked out. The girls were out there. They didn't say anything. They just stared and looked. Mm-hmm. And you put me in your car and drove me back to campus. Yeah, it was all, all three of us, B. Simone and, yep. and you. Yeah, your girlfriend at the time. Yeah, so it was, yeah, I will never forget it. So thank you again for, you no know, problem. intervening in that situation. That could have been bad. Um, we all helped each other out in certain different ways. Somebody helped me out too. So it's it's the tree of life. Bring it, it forward. Yeah, yeah. So that's dope. So we reconnected um, the last couple of years, and here we are. We have really dope conversations. I can't wait for us to have this conversation because we have a lot of really good intuitive logical conversation so i'm excited to share your brain with other people thank you i appreciate that cool so the premise of this episode is to talk about the way that male and female relation differently um and i want us to share how the hows right this is not just about criticizing each other or battling each other Mm -hmm. but how do we get to the space? What is happening? How can we understand our, ourselves better? Um, and so let's get right into it. Um, they say it's because we come from different planets. Our individual makings, thoughts, and process in this human experience is just not the same. So today we are going to learn and gain some understanding as to where we are, what we can do to heal, and highlight the true ways we need to be more connected. So 
let's start. What are ways men and women are different in regards to our physical, emotional, and spiritual ways? I think one of the main things is how we're raised. Rather as a single parent home or two parents, boys are raised different than girls. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. I have two girls and two boys. Mm -hmm. So I, I see it personally myself where, you know, you have the traditional way of, you know, tough love on boys, treating all girls like princesses, being real catering to them. Boys have certain chores that girls don't have and vice versa. So it's, it's conditioned from the beginning. We talk about this a lot, how our norms are exactly what they are. So we grow up like that. We grow up where a girl is not told to take the trash out. A boy is not told to get dinner ready and everything like that. So that has a lot to do with it. So you kind of have to unlearn a lot of that, where at a certain age, you got to learn to take the trash out. You got to learn to cook some breakfast for yourself and everything like that. You have to learn to do laundry. So I think that's where it starts at. Yeah, so cross-functioning, learning as humanity, rather than like, I'm going to teach you to be a man and I'm going to teach you to be a woman, mm -hmm. but rather teaching you how to be an individual and to stand on your own mm -hmm. on this earth, meaning that a woman needs to learn how to change her tire and a man needs to learn how to cook a healthy meal for himself. Sure. And, and we don't need to like, you know, segment our learning experience because of our gender. I yes. I have a friend who has a son and daughter and we had this conversation mm -hmm. because she, she has it where her daughter never takes the trash out, doesn't touch the trash, nothing. And I said to her, what is the chore that your son has that he can't do? And she didn't have anything, but for your daughter, you're, you're almost crippling her. Mm. Because it's, 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 I'm not saying it's all, but it's some women that's even like that as an adult. I'm not taking the trash out. I don't want to touch the trash. Right. But if you're living alone, who else going to take the trash out? Straight up, I take out my trash every day. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, it's, it's, me. it's going to happen. And vice versa, you have a man who grows up not touching the kitchen. Like, I was one of those guys. Mm -hmm. I figured it out once, uh, like high school, college, mm -hmm. and everything. But my sisters were taught to season the chicken, get the dinner ready. Basically, they basically was cooking in high school, our dinner. Mm -hmm. I was never asked to do any of those things. Wow. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so just to like segment on from that, what are the misconceptions that men feel about women? That men feel about women? Misconceptions. Um, so, so meaning, you know, not really accurate, but... It's, mm -hmm. it's told to be true. It's all about women, no matter what the situation is. Mm -hmm. Like, all, it's all about the woman. You have to make sure you please her, make sure you pursue her, make sure you, everything's about her. And then when you do that, if you do it right, then you will be happy mm -hmm. on the flip side. So you don't matter. You're taught that you don't matter when it comes to women. I don't think it's taught like that, though. I don't think it's taught that you don't matter. It's just taught this is the first thing you need to do. That's your priority. That's your priority. Your goal. You'll, you'll be good after that, though. <laughs> <laughs> if you are good to a woman and you do all the right things for a woman, you set a life. You good. What they say? Happy wife, happy life? <laughs> oh, that's so tough. You, that's so tough. I never thought about it like that. My dad was the first person to tell me that's not true. And my dad's been married over 40 some years. Mm. And he told me when I first got married, he said, don't believe that. Mm. Do not believe that. And I, and I like went against him. I'm like, nah, dad, you don't know what you're talking about. This is mad. Like, nah. So you still believed it even after he told you not to? Foolish. Foolish. Wow. Like, I literally, I was like, nah, like, if I'm doing A, B, like, I'm going to make sure this, this, and that. And she, she going to follow suit. She going to make sure I'm good. But that's, you know, human, humans aren't, you know, you can't, you can't put that on a human being. Yeah. You know, that like we're all different. Responsibility, yeah. Yeah. Oh gosh. But, another one. Give me one other one. Um that's the main one right there. Uh another misconception that men have that women really I know they do. I know they do. It's the it's the caring part. They they want us they want us to be emotional and open up, but it's it's like a it's like a trick almost sometimes, I feel like, with, with men. It's like, do you really want me to open up or do you want to use it against me in, you know, in times, whatever, like that? So you it's like the- She wants you to be uh, vulnerable? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. 
So vulnerability I mean, is a misconception. Yeah. Or the honesty part. Remember, we always talk about that. Women always saying, hey, just be honest. Just keep it real with us and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, all right. But then it's a delivery. It's a delivery way you have to do it. Because if you're all the way honest, oh, why you say it like that? Your delivery was all wrong. It was too brutal. Mm. So it's, it's a lot of things we have to, like me and you talk about a lot. We have to relearn. We really have to relearn a lot of different things that we were taught and everything. Mm. That's good. From the beginning. So <clears throat> misconceptions that women feel about men, vice versa. So I would say one thing that I'm uncomfortable with is that women believe that men are just heartless. Like he, he doesn't know what he wants. He's selfish. He's just out here misleading. Men were created to tear us down. Like, it's like, you guys are like the, like the no, in it. every yeah. story. <laughs> really? Yeah, we're very, I mean, at least for me, right? It's always like, protect yourself from a man. Um, don't let the same thing happen twice. Um, he's going to lie to you. Make sure you keep him on check and keep asking him. Like, it's just this consistent feeling like you have to protect yourself from a man. Mm. It's almost like, wait a second. So he's not meant to, pr- you're telling me that he's meant to protect me and a man is going to protect me. But at the same time, you're telling me to protect myself from a man. So yes. But you remember how we, remember the, um, there was one thing we talked about. Remember how we talked about how girls are taught to protect themselves from men. Mm-hmm. They're always taught that, but they're not taught how to see a good man and how to work within that. Right. Because it's, it's always protection. Like you said, it's always protection. And that, um, that's a big misconception. But I mean, it's, it's tough though, because you, unfortunately you do have a lot of men that do those things. Yeah, but you should protect yourself from people. Like, I don't, I don't think it's a man thing. I think men and women both can deceive you. Men, both men and women. We heard that, we heard that too. I, I don't know. I don't know if you heard. I remember my mom telling my sisters, hey, watch that girl. Mm. Or, like, or like the whole thing, if you have a boyfriend, don't tell your girlfriend about your boyfriend. Don't tell, you know, about different things. As if she would try to steal your man or whatever like that. So you're right. It goes all the way around. Protect yeah, yourself all the, all the way around. Yourself from everybody, which means that I shouldn't letting my guard down and trusting someone and, and, and all of these things that I think are our natural instincts are, I are consistently being guarded by that notion. Don't trust nobody. Okay, so with that being said, if a man knows that, he knows that's the misconception. Mm-hmm. And now you take it to the part where the man is saying, hey, I have to prove to her. I have to, it's all about her and show her. That's part of that line where I have to prove to her and show her that I'm legit. I'm with her. I want to be with her and I'm not going to hurt her. So it kind of falls back in line. Yeah. You have to break that. Wall, almost like you got to break that wall down to get to, in the order next to, get to wall. it. <laughs> yeah, you're right. To the next wall. <laughs> it's exactly. like breaking a wall and get it to the next wall. Breaking that wall. This is wall. And, she, and she building the wall as you're breaking it down. <laughs> Um, and, and men are the same thing. I think that men have, um, I think, a guarding aspect of them. Too. Oh, I know I do. I, I, like, I'm, I'm totally honest with that. Right now, I have a big wall, and it's, it's, there's no need to try. Literally. Damn, uh, really? There's no, there's no need to try. You're not going to do it. I'm working on it on my own. So what, is the, what, is the, what is that wall? What do you feel? You feel you can't trust women because of X. What's X? X is. <laughs> exes and you know what and you know what the piggyback on what you're saying it's not just exes it's, it's people in general mm-hmm. you know and it's not it's not many people like I, I haven't been hurt like many people and everything like that it's, it's not on those lines but it's more of like i'll i'll keep you at an arm distance mm-hmm. in a sense. and i'm only talking like in a relationship aspect like me and you had these conversations i'm not even looking for a relationship or anything right not even trying to date any nothing none of that Right. But I know that because my wall is up. So I'm not even going to try to play as if, oh, I'm cool. This is no, my wall is up. So what's the foundation when you say, okay, your wall is up. And obviously we just agreed that we're all in the state of protection. Um, Mm -hmm. And trust is obviously something we're all struggling with. And I think that that might be the disconnect when it comes to relationships working. Do you think Mm -hmm. that the journey of, of finding trust or gaining trust is self a self journey um how can we work together to do it like where where are the steps when it comes to that? i don't i don't think it's a um i think it's really a self journey i think many people try to get their walls break, broken down by other people and it's not their job to do that 
it's your job to, to break your own wall down. Mm. We look for other people to, all right, well, if they show me this, they show me the trust, they show me they're loyal on this, then they can break my wall down. And they don't say that verbally. It's not, those are not the exact words they say, but subconsciously they're saying it. Right. But your wall has to be broken down by you. Mm. So what are that's, your, that's your wall. What'd you say? What are the steps that you're taking to break it? Therapy is one. Um, that's the biggest one. And to be honest, alone time, like when you, you have to like really hear your thoughts, hear the things that, you know, that goes in your mind mm -hmm. and just, you know, taking a step back and kind of like just looking at everything for how it was and listen, really trying to be empathetic to the other person. What were they going through in their life mm -hmm. to do the certain things that they did and everything? Yeah. You know, I, just every posted, I posted something today. I don't know if you saw it, but it said like, um, you you can't be mad at people when you know where their pain or their infliction is coming from towards mm -hmm. you um and i put like yeah you, you can't be mad because you know but you also could decide to make a decision because you know yeah right? exactly um, yeah because um you know we all go through stuff yeah you know we all got our own demons our own traumas yeah um, and yes, it's certain people that are out there to hurt you and hurt others. We get that. Um, but it's some people that's just living off survival. Mm. It's just like a natural reaction to do certain things when they are faced with something. Mm. You know, so it's, you know, you got to be kind of empathetic to people. Mm. Like I have no hate or malice with anybody, you know, and everything like that. Like I said, nobody's actually like demolished me in a sense. Mm -hmm. Everybody's been hurt. Right. But, you know, people, you know, people come from different backgrounds and grew up differently. So you got to take all those things to look into account at the same time. And even if you grew up in the same household, you could, we take in trauma so differently. We take information so differently. So what might affect one person doesn't affect another in the same exact situation. Yeah. Um, you're right. Because you can grow up in a two parent home and be with your dad. But if your dad grew up differently, Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a it's a lot of traits. I was watching this um Miles Davis documentary is on um, Netflix, mm -hmm. and he talked about his childhood, how he seen his mother and father fight, and everything. Mm -hmm. And you could see the rage and anger that he had because of that. But you never know what his grandfather dealt with and grandmother. Yeah. So you even though it's two parent household, wealthy family, you don't know. Mm -hmm. You just don't know. Yeah. So those are things. Those are things. Um, I had a, I had a great dad. Um, I, I, I kind of have a lot of his traits where it comes to just, just not emotionally thinking. He taught me that really early, mm -hmm. just relaxing, a uh, soft answer, knowing how to communicate with people. Mm -hmm. And he, he's, he's like really good with that. Mm -hmm. So I have a, I, I have to give him a lot of praise with that, but I also see a lot of men like react to temper and everything like that. Um, and that needs to be worked on, you know? That really needs to be worked on. And especially, that goes back to the whole breaking cycles thing. Like, a lot of this is passed down. A lot of this is not our stuff that we're carrying. Like, you're right. If I mean, I grew up in a domestic abuse household, and I had to see and notice within myself that a lot of those traits I was carrying. And I thought that, you know, hitting was a way to show affection for a long time. Like, and I would- Being, being hit or hitting? Hitting. So in my first relationship, I remember in, in high school, I was 15. I was in a long term relationship. And I remember I would hit him like not like beat him up, hit him. But like I would like feel like I needed to like inflict um, whether I was happy or not. Like it was it was like a, a mechanism that I was doing and I didn't notice it. And I remember one day he like checked me on it. And he was like, you need to really stop putting your hands on me. And I'm like, damn, you're acting like I put my hands on you. He's like, Melissa, you put your hands on me a lot. And I was like, mm -hmm. damn, I didn't, like, I didn't notice. And he was like, yeah. And I had to sit with that. Even, you know, at 16, 17 years old, I was young, but I had to sit with it. Like, okay, what makes me want to slap him around even when I'm happy? Like, what makes me feel like putting my hands on him um, is okay? Like, mm -hmm. and, not, and natural. Like, I almost thought it was natural. And then I like sitting with it for a while. I'm like, damn, like I need to heal that. Like I need to really face where that's coming from. Like that's, that's not mine. That was taught to me. That's not. So how did you feel it? How did you, what did you do? Um, 
well, I asked him to just um, also call me out more. Like whenever he, I do it to call me out every time I do it so I could start checking myself and him checking me. Um, mm -hmm. And I started catching it. Like I started, like mm -hmm. every time I would like go to like do really? it, I would catch myself. Yeah. And I'm really? like, and I would say it out loud. Like I needed to like facing it to me means speaking it. So like when I'm, I'm like, damn, I was just about to hit you for no reason. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, I just, I, I don't even notice it sometimes. And he's mm -hmm. like, but you are now. Like, you know, and he supported me through that process too. Like, at no point did he like ridicule me or like um, put me down about it. He was just like, this is the thing. So think about, so think about his emotional maturity too. Yeah. To yeah. You see, like, he, it could have been a different way where he like, all right, you hit me, I'm gonna hit you back. Facts, especially at the age that we were at. Yeah. He could have for sure done that, but I knew that he wouldn't because of the way he grew up. Now, he, I was just about to ask you that. I was yeah. just about to ask you that. So, so his parents are very solid people. Um, and I've, their parent, his parents got a divorce when he was a kid, um, but his father ended up buying the apartment next door to his mother mm. after their divorce. And mm. just so that they can co-parent as closely as possible. I love that. Um, and I thought that was remarkable. And I used to, even then, I used to say, like, you know how lucky you are to have parents that love you that much that they're willing to sacrifice both of them? Because, like, you know, his mom also had to sacrifice and continue to watch her ex husband live next door, also get remarried, right? Like, his father got remarried, the woman lived, his stepmom lived in the house mm. next door. They cohabit, like, they cohabitated for years like even when he was an adult like up until like literally like five years ago or something like that um mm. and so i'm like you know how much love they have to have for you to to sacrifice themselves that way like that's a blessing and you know like he obviously doesn't take it to the same level of gratitude that i do watching it but um i think that that's remarkable um now, and how are you how are you in a relationship after that though um oh yeah that was completely dissipated i practiced it with him perfect but, yeah, it was completely dissipated. I never put my hands on a, a man. Yeah. Um, but but it took a lot to kind of address it and get to that space for sure. Okay. So like we said, like it's learned. A lot of things are learned. Yeah. And but some things we, Yeah. And some things we don't even know that we have that's learned. We don't even know it. Yeah. We don't even know it. So it's, you know, and we don't even even if we do know, we don't think it's a problem. Right, because that's where I was trying to, I was about to say, like, I didn't see me slapping him every time, like, I got overly excited to be a problem. Like, I'm just like, what do you mean? I think you like it, no? And he's like, no. Like, only because <laughs> I've allowed it doesn't mean I like it. Like, I'd rather you not slap me. Like, like <laughs> damn, like, I didn't, like, I didn't know. I'm like, oh, we're just play fighting. Like, I was trying to find um, ways to justify why that was natural and normal. Mm -hmm. because it, was it had become natural to me, but that was never natural. Yeah. You know? So that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so what are other ways that we can begin to communicate more effectively to gain understanding and alignment? Well, one one thing is communicate to listen and not to respond. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, and this men and women do this. Mm -hmm. Is I'm waiting for you to be finished because I heard one little thing you said and I want to react to that and respond to that. And not listen to the whole thing. You know how you know when somebody's really listening? They ask you follow up questions on it, on exactly what you just said. Mm, that's a good you know, one. like if I'm listening to you and you telling me something, you're explaining something. All right. So what do you think about that? How did I make you feel about that? It's follow up questions, but it's we trying to just get our point across. You're wrong. I'm right. This is why I'm right. I just no had that conversation with somebody and I was like, you know, I, I don't I, I don't feel respected because. You, like that that example that you gave like I feel like you grab the one thing that I said and just harp on that and then you miss everything else and a lot of, I was telling this person I was like you know I think a lot of the times we're agreeing but it's <laughs> just, it, you're missing the fact that we're agreeing because you got stuck on this one thing not my mm -hmm. thought and now you're trying to fight me on something that we're agreeing on like do you understand how like ineffective that is of time and energy but and you know what that one thing did? That one thing was the trigger. Mm, yeah. We all got our triggers. Mm -hmm. We all got our triggers. So if we hear that trigger, that we're just stuck on that. It's, mm -hmm. it's over. 
is de is defense mechanism right now. We defending ourselves mm -hmm. on that trigger. So I'm talking to my daughter today. Um, she's 20, goes to Hampton. And I'm noticing, I really noticed when she was dating in high school, she dated a musician. I liked the guy too. Mm -hmm. And I used to ask her, like, do you ever ask him, how's this place going? How's his, his musician, like his, his, um, the work he's doing, he's a drummer. How's he doing and everything? She's like, nah, I never, never really even thought about it. How's his grades and everything? So when we're all together, I'm asking him, she's not even listening to him. Like we have a listening problem, all of us. Well, we don't listen to each other, you know? So it's, it's, it's weird, you know, we all need to work on it, you know, cause we can just, just only be absorbed with ourselves and what we got going on and everything like that. Mm. So I think that's a big, that's a big thing too. Yeah. Yeah. That's big. That's really big. I think also you're right about the questions part too. I think that um, effective listening with love, like listening with love yeah. means yep. like, I really want to understand you. Like I really, really, really want to get to the understanding of what you're saying. And right now I don't, but how can I, like, how can I ask more questions? How can I um, get to a space of understanding? And I think that that's like super huge. That could, that could change a whole, it could change a whole human like interaction period. Yeah, for sure. And that's, that's on any relationship. Yeah. You yeah. Know, parent, right. Not just, yeah. Parent, child, anything, coworkers, mm -hmm. you know, anything you can like, you have to be able to listen to somebody because you know, that's their point of view on things. Mm -hmm. And you want somebody to listen to you too. Word. Yeah. We and not deflect and not deflecting how we talk about all the time, the deflecting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I would say for me, one of the biggest learning lessons I'm, I'm getting through right now um, is accountability. I think of self accountability, meaning I need to accept that this miscommunication and disalignment with this person is due to Melissa not um, listening actively, um, not catching the red flags, um, not um, taking the time to understand this person. Not, I created this monster. And I need to take accountability to the fact that I allowed this to get to this point. And what is this we're talking about Just to this overall, point? Like to, to the point where um, it's, we're not connecting, we're not aligned, right? Like we're not, this is, I'm not happy about this and I have false expectations and I, I am upset right now and, and conflicting with this person because I created, I got us to this space. Now, will you ever say that to another man? Like yeah. literally, exactly how you said it to me. You was, you will say that. I just said that. I just said that the other day um, because I had to really sit with it because I think another th bad habit that we all have, right? And I, I admit I have. It's like the victim. Like, well, you did this to me, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you did this yeah. to me. I feel horrible right now because you did X, Y, Z. And it's like, wait a second here. This person doesn't own me, right? This person doesn't have any control over me. I allowed this space. How did I allow this space? Okay, I allowed this because I didn't speak up the first time, you know, they did something that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. I didn't set boundaries effectively. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I need to take responsibility of me and not playing the victim. The reason why this is happening is because I played this part in it. The other per person's fault and what they did, that's not to your concern. Like you can't control somebody else's actions. You can only nah. control your response and your actions. Um, and so accountability is huge, self-accountability, not trying to hold somebody else accountable, but holding yeah, yourself. Yeah, exactly, exactly. No, that's key, definitely key. Uh, yeah, I think we all, we're, we all, you know, it sounds good playing the victim. Mm -hmm. is it, you know, a lot of times it sounds good playing the victim. I talked to um, one girl I'm really cool with. She tells me all the time that she always hears about other women's stories mm -hmm. of men dogging them and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I told her, I was like, you know, it's, it's women out here dogging men too. And she's like, I just never hear those stories. And so I challenged her with something that a lot of women and men don't tell when they dog somebody. Nope. They're not going to tell that part. <laughs> you know, it's a, like another woman could tell you every day, he did me dirty. He did this to me. He did that to me. But if she did it, her friends don't know. 
right. unless they know the guy and the guy or the guy's friends and they told their side but they don't people don't tell what they did wrong you're always the hero in your story <laughs> <laughs> What's the, right. uh it was one thing i seen it was like hey don't trip everybody's a villain in somebody's story straight up and you're the hero. <laughs> yeah so that's just, that's just what it is i know i'm a villain in some people's story too that's just, it, it just what it is. It is what it is. And whether that's reality or not, doesn't matter. It doesn't because at, this, at the end of the day, you're not accountability yeah. for what you did. Mm -hmm. You're just passing along as, I didn't do anything wrong. He or she did me dirty. They're the ones that's wrong and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So you're right. The accountability part is huge. It's freaking huge. Um, so what would be your vision of a healthy communal partnership? Well... I think is open, honest expectations because expectations, they ruin a lot. Mm. And sometimes you have expectations in your head that you're not verbally saying to your partner or another person. You mm -hmm. just have it in your head that you're not saying. So that open, honest, you know, expectations and everything and just constant communication. And you got to be honest with yourself too. Like it may not work for somebody else. Like if this man or this woman, they meet and one person is on a different path than the other person, that can, that can all be hashed out within a day or two on conversation of, hey, this is what I'm looking forward to. This is what I'm looking for and vice versa. But you got to have that honest conversation mm. and be honest with yourself. Yeah. That's another thing. Like we're always asking people, be honest with me, be honest with me. But I'm, I'm starting to even question whether people are being honest with themselves. <laughs> Like, how could you be honest with me when you still lying to you? <laughs> I don't, it's almost but people, like. But you know, people don't, people don't really know they're lying to themselves, you know? Because they start to believe, like they're starting to believe whatever story they're telling themselves. Is their reality, mm -hmm. is their reality. Yeah, so that's hard. That's, that's hard to, you know, cross that bridge of, hey, I need to be real with myself. Mm, that's what therapy. Is that? Therapy cracks right through that though. I don't know if you noticed that with your therapy. Oh like, yeah, for sure. Therapy, like that's the first thing that cracks like whatever i told myself versus reality comes to like like a communal balance like it's like oh wait a second this yeah. happened and that's how it perceived it but really this is what makes sense hmm. yeah because you do it's just you know what else helps that therapy and journaling i never used to journal i never used to do that like i had a couple friends like hey just start journaling mm -hmm. and i would write stuff that i didn't even know what i was thinking Mm. And that's how you learn yourself. Yeah. Like, I'm literally writing and like, I didn't even know I thought that. Mm. It's crazy. Yeah, journaling is definitely a gift for sure. Like, because I don't like writing. That's the thing. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, you could do, you know what I do too? I, I learned. I learned this. Yes. I learned this because <laughs> it's better for me. I'm always driving and everything. I could just journal, write, just say whatever. I have a million memos that I, and it's usually when I'm driving actually that it comes yeah. up and I'll get like all these thoughts and like if I, if I used to feel like, sh like fumbled by like my thoughts, I'm like, all right, let me just talk this out. Now, and, do you re, do you re-listen to them again? Some, not, not all. Uh, some of them are just get it out and then it, I just let it go. Okay. I just like, it's part of my release sometimes. Okay. I got you. Yeah, that's good. Um, I think... Besides being honest, I think to have a healthy partnership, trust is like the basis of our foundation. And we need to get to a space where we can really face trust accordingly um, and really just let vulnerability lead. Like, like let, and I know it's hard, right? But the way I see it is, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna expose my vulnerability out loud to anyone that way if I'm vulnerable with one person, I'm not going to ever have a fear of them exposing me. You know what I mean? It's like that way I can be vulnerable with everyone. And it's like, no one's going to have anything against me. If I expose me, if I have that ownership, okay. not just the partnership but with everyone, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, if I can be raw with myself, with anybody, then it's like, I, I can't, there's no way that I can feel a lack of trust from anybody because none, like nobody can like, hold nothing against me that I don't have with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. I never thought about that though, but it makes sense. It yeah, makes sense. So that's, that's the journey I've been on for like 
I would say like the past like six, seven years, it's just exposed all my stuff. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna expose it my way. Um and that way no one is gonna have nothing on me. And now did you did you so before that, so with partnerships, relationships, mm-hmm. did you used to hold back at times with expressing everything? Yeah, even with myself. Mm, that's where it started, huh? Really? That's the source. I wasn't being open and vulnerable with myself. I didn't even like crying in private. Like, you know how people usually you fight tears? Really? Yeah, you know how you fight tears around people? Mm-hmm. Melissa was sitting here fighting tears by herself. Like, nah, Melissa, you got this. Don't cry. Because that was what was taught to me. I was taught not to cry. I was taught not to be emotional, not to be weak. I was taught that I had to be the strong one. I had to be the responsible one. And so I had to keep it together all the mm. time. So even when I was in private, those same things were effective. Like, no, you have to be okay. And so I wouldn't even cry by myself. So I didn't mm. even trust myself with my own vulnerability. When did you, when did you first feel uncomfortable crying? I still, do. I still I still do <laughs> I still do like it's so sad but I still do like even now like sometimes I'm like oh, I feel like, like you know when you start to feel like that knot in your throat yeah, yeah, yeah. you just want to yeah. release it right and I'm like mm-hmm. all right let me wash something sad. like I have to force myself to wash something sad to induce my tears really mm. Sadly, but yes. <laughs> and how do and how do you feel after it's done when you cry after you Amazing. Cry? Amazing. Of course I feel amazing. It's it's a great it's, it's, not, it's not all the time. Like <clears throat> like when I cry, I I just all right man, that's enough. <laughs> you know I mean? All right, come on. You got it out. It's cool. Keep it moving. But it, yeah, it's not yeah, it's not a <laughs> feel good type of thing all the time. Yeah, most times it's releasing. I think for a long time I believe that expressing that much pain and that much and tears meant that it could lead me into depression like for a long time i was just trying to mm. um, i was trying to avoid depression i was trying to avoid anxiety i was trying to avoid feeling really sad and so tapping into any emotion made me feel like okay i need to hold it back because i didn't want it to take over but now it's more of like okay i know it's a sense of release and i'm gonna be okay after this especially when i get the knot like it's like it needs to come out like i need to get it out gotcha. um but yeah it's um yeah, it's some. It's still a battle. It's still something that I'm. I'm conditioned to to believe, and I have to work at it all the time. All right. Well, that's half, that's that's the first step. Knowing that it's something you need to work on. Word. Um. So, how are you healing your lineage and breaking cycles when it comes to understanding and connecting <sighs> with the opposite sex? Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so again, like I said, I have two older daughters, mm-hmm. twenty and fifteen. Mm-hmm. And I'm just really working on them with being empathetic and caring because we always hear about me. You had these conversations of I have two younger boys. Hey, protect your sisters. Watch out for your sisters and everything like that. So I'm not so much on my older daughters, but I'm just kind of showing them, hey, you need to look out for your brothers. You need to look out for your dad. Like I had a birthday yesterday. My 20 year old, she didn't come home. She's in Maryland with friends. So we had a conversation earlier. I'm like, hey, why didn't you just come home? You haven't seen me in a while and everything. And, you know, she started crying, emotional. <laughs> she started, she's like, yeah, I didn't even think about it. Yeah, yeah, she, she wasn't it, trying to hurt you. Yeah, she was. Just- no, it didn't. But what I'm trying to teach her, not stop deflecting. She was like that. I kept asking you what you were going to do for your birthday. I said that. That's not the point. All you had to say was, dad, I'm coming up. I want to see you spend some time, you know, whatever. What I'm gonna say, no, I'm busy. I can't spend spend time with you. Right. So don't so stop the excuses. You know? And my other daughter who's 15, I constantly like she working now. Tell me thank you when I drop you off at work, when I pick you up from work. Just little things like that. Show appreciation. Mm. So I know in my family, it's uh people don't say you love you, I love you, mm-hmm. I care about you, those those type of things. I got that too. Yeah, so I'm making a I'm making a point to say, hey, I love you. I'm proud of you. I'm happy for you. I love everything you're doing. Like my dad was good at it. My mom wasn't. My mom's side of the family wasn't. My dad's side of the family was. Mm. So I'm making sure, like, you incorporate it. Yeah, yeah, we incorporate that and just encouraging each other. Mm. Like when we have a conversation, it shouldn't be because you did something wrong. Sometimes, hey, I need to talk to you, and it could be a conversation just on encouraging you. You did a great job doing this, doing that. I love the fact that you did this and that. 
like I have those conversations with my kids where it's like, hey, I need to talk to you. And it's just a praise conversation, like literally just praising them mm-hmm. up and down the line on things they're doing. That's awesome. Because we need to hear that. Yeah. We need to hear that. It shouldn't be, you know how it is, I got to talk to you and everybody's nervous. <laughs> it's like, what happened? Yeah. What did I do? <laughs> yeah. Nah, it, it, it shouldn't be like that. Yeah. You know? Like, get, I, want, I want to give them the same energy when they mess up, which they will, mm-hmm. and when they're doing a great job. Yeah. Yeah. You that's, know? Good. that's good. Um, for me, <clears throat> what I'm doing really is something that I struggle with in all of my relationships, but it's like really speaking up for myself. Um, really? Yeah. Like I, I'm a very outspoken person, so it's not like I'm a, um, pushover or anything, but I do, sometimes I compromise myself and what, what, how, how I feel to try to protect somebody else's emotion. Example, please. So for instance, um, Somebody says something that I that hurts my feelings, right? Instead of saying like, you know, what you just said to me really like hurt my feelings, I would just say I would just make an excuse like, oh well, you know, they just was probably in a bad mood or they didn't mean it like that. But then I would internalize it, like I would come home and I'll think about it again, and then if they call me, I'll be thinking about it, and and I will not say anything because I'm like, oh well, if I say it, they're gonna be upset, or maybe they didn't mean it, so I should just not like I will hold myself accountable for someone else not knowing that they're doing something. So I think mm-hmm. just making people aware, right? Because people are like, oh, well, you know, you didn't tell me. So how do you expect me to know? Not and mind readers. Like, right, you're not mind readers. And it's like, but like, why are you not being logical? But there's no such thing as logic, right? Like <laughs> what you feel is what you feel. What I feel is what I feel. If you never said anything, then how do you, how could you be mad at me or feel some type of way about it? You never said anything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do that a lot and I, I'm trying to get better at that. Um, and so remember the example, remember the example you used earlier, which your ex-boyfriend telling you, Hey, I don't like when you hit me and you see how you took it, see how you grew from it. Mm-hmm. Give somebody else that chance too. Yeah. To yeah. Grow from it. Yeah. I think, um, I think, I don't know, maybe like my insecurity from it comes from the fact that like, I'm like, Oh, maybe I'm going to say it wrong. Like, I'm always thinking, like, what's the best way to say it? Like, I don't want to be, I don't want to sound blunt or I don't want to hurt their feelings. So how can I effectively communicate it? Okay, I can't think about it at the moment, so I'm going to just push it aside. So when you're, when, with your ex-boyfriend, did he tell you he didn't like when you hit him after you hit him or he did it at a separate time? It was out of anger. Like, he was just, he hit hit a threshold. (laughs) Um, And so, because he kept it in. Yeah. So So I mean, I hear that, I hear that a lot with the delivery. Watch how you deliver. And especially with men, it's like, I, I came to that realization. It doesn't matter how I'm going to say it. You want to take it the wrong way anyway. If you're not receptive to it, you're going to take it the wrong way anyway. Right. And that's, so I feel like that. But then people say when I say that, I'm insensitive and empathetic. But I'm like, I, I feel like I can say Who says that? Um, I, Who says- I, I hear that from people all the time. Like, no, no, I'm saying, <laughs> is, it the, is it the person that you came at that said, hey, you said it wrong? Well, it was one person, it was a third party. So, so the, the person, I'm going to just be completely candid because um, my sister doesn't listen to this anyway. Um, so <laughs> my, my sister is the one that brings it up to me all the time, right? And she absorbs me with other people. And then she also experiences me directly. Um, mm-hmm. And she's like, you always do this. Like, and then you get mad and it's like, but why are you not having my best interests at heart? Like I have yours. And she said, but how are we supposed to just know? And I was like, because you know, like you, maybe other people I get, but you know me, like, you know, what's going to trigger me. You know, the type of person I am, you can say, Oh, well, you didn't tell me. So I'm going to just take advantage. Cause that's where it's coming down to now. Like, I know that Melissa is going to do X, Y, and Z because she always does. <laughs> so I'm going to just take advantage of it. And then now that I'm not pissed off and I set like alarm, you're like, well, you never said anything. And it's like, the hell like <laughs> that manipulation right the manipulation part right and then yeah. she's like, you know you just don't communicate effectively and then you blow up and then you just expect people to just know so why are you blowing up and i was like because like maybe have you not noticed i have been saying it maybe not as directly but i've communicated things it's just direct communication they want to receive but direct communication listen i have a problem with this now listen everybody's not going to take it right that's right. what i yeah. At least they know. Right. Yeah. But I, re- I realize that people who don't take it the right way to say, hey, delivery, they just deflect it. Yeah. Just deflect it. Yeah. Can we yeah. stay, on, stay on topic right here? Yeah. 
that people hate doing that. It's always like, but this, but you did, but five years ago when you like, what? <laughs> what are we doing here? It's silly. Yeah. It's silly. So that's good that you're you're attacking that. You know, that's what yeah. you deal with and everything like that. So that's that's really good. I'm about to start being my own cheerleader. This this whole I, and I've been embarking in this for about a month now, and. And I'm like cutting ties. I'm setting boundaries for myself. I'm protecting myself and being here for me because I'm I'm done lighting myself on fire for other people. Um, I yeah. think karma points are all the way up, and I am ready to relinquish <laughs> the responsibility of other people. Period. Um, and focus on myself. So I'm very. Proud do you feel Do you feel bad afterwards after you do it? Sometimes, um, but it's starting to fade away slowly. Okay. slowly. So when you feel bad afterwards, like what, what's the process with that? Like, what do you do? Um, I, I write about it. I've been writing about it. And I'm just like, Melissa, you are like, you know, I have to write things like, Melissa, you're not selfish for mm -hmm. yourself. Um, mm -hmm. Melissa, you are a good person. Um, even when you are being direct, um, Melissa, you're like, cause I, it's more of those negative thoughts that come into me. Like, am I being a good person? Am mm -hmm. I being kind? Am I being too selfish? Like, those are the things that come mm -hmm. into I have to write these affirmations for myself. Like you just made this decision for you and it's the best for you. And you're not bad for that. You're not selfish for that. You didn't make the bad, a bad decision by deciding to do that. All right. That's good. Yeah. Because it's one thing to take that step and do it, but it's always a follow-up step that needs to be watered and nurtured also. And, and practice. Like it's not going to happen. <laughs> what I realized is like, you know, when you make a decision and it's like, you get all these tests that come afterwards. It's like, <laughs> Oh, wait, wait. I, I did this one time. I thought like I was just gonna like get a break after this, but like life is like, oh, you made this decision. Okay, let me see how how committed you are to this. Yeah. Like, you start throwing all the like literally. I ha I was dodgeball out here. I was like, oh yeah. man, like yeah. what's happening? Mm -hmm. um, but I, I thankfully I'm here and I'm gonna continue doing what I need to do for myself, and I'm already seeing progress from it. So I'm proud. Good, good. Proud of you too. So, That's great. Thank you. thank you. Um, okay, well, everyone, thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting me. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as we did. Thank you, Marcus, for being a part of this. Thank right. you for having me. Appreciate it. Um, and so stay tuned for the after credits. Remember, that's the best part. And tune in next time. Later. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to subscribe and follow on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube at Relations Podcast via The Diary of MR. M as in Melissa, R as in Rosario. And now, the best part, here are the after credits. A message from my co-host. The great Michael X said a great quote that I live by. Be careful criticizing people who don't think as you think and don't do it as you do. Because there was a time when you didn't think the way you thought and do the things that you do now. So with that being said, we all have to really just forgive each other, be empathetic to each other, try to understand each other, you know, because we're all living in this world just trying, trying to be better, trying to raise our kids, trying to be good family members and everything like that, be good friends. So just give each other a chance, be sympathetic to each other, and we'll be fine.